Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an awesome polynomial system. Now this problem is kind of similar to a long list IMO problem from Germany. Maybe we'll do that problem some other time. But anyways, we have this equation, I mean the equations, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 14, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 36, and x to the fourth power plus y to the fourth power plus z to the fourth power is equal to 98. And we're looking for all solutions real and complex. So let's start with the first one. I'd like to take x plus y plus z and square both sides. That gives me x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus two times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. Now first of all when you look at this you get the sum and you get the two-way uh, products. This should remind you Vieta's formulas obviously. But let's go ahead and use some variables for these. For example, let's call this S for sum, and let's call this U, so that I can say to U, right? Okay, great. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is equal to 14. So from here, we get a relationship uh, between S and U. You can write it as S squared is equal to 14 plus 2U. Okay, from here, I can isolate U. You can be written as S squared minus 14 all over 2. And this is something we're going to be using later on. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the sum of the cubes. Now, there's a couple of ways to look at it. First of all, you can just multiply, for example, you can multiply this by x plus y plus z and get the sum of the cubes, but you'll also be getting some additional terms which you have to deal with. Or, I'm going to be using a slightly different approach here, you can also factor this polynomial, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. Because this is divisible by x plus y plus z, and the other factor is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. And the second factor here can also be written as a sum of squares. If you think about it, you'll hopefully find out. So now let's go ahead and replace x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed with something else, right? And that is equal to 36. We don't know what x, y, z is, so let's go ahead and call that p. We Earlier we called this one s, and we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 14, and obviously we're subtracting the u from there. So our expression gives us another equation, which is 36 minus 3p is equal to s times the quantity 14 minus u. So that's another equation that I would like to be using later on. Okay, so this is just another equation. But of course, I'm going to have three variables, so I do need more equations. Let's go ahead and take a look at something else now. I haven't used the fourth powers yet, so why don't we just take this sum of squares and square it to get the fourth power. When you square something like this, of course, you're going to be getting some additional terms, which we have to deal with. That's why this is kind of messy, so bear with me while I go through this mess. So we, we get the sum of the squares, which is fourth powers in this case, plus two times, you know, AAB, AC, BC stuff. So that's going to look like x squared, y squared x squared z squared and y squared z squared. Now we do know the sum of the squares which is 14 so this will be 196. We know the sum of the fourth power which is 98 which means that from here we can find the sum in parentheses which is this one. I don't know what you want to call that but since we can find the value of that we don't really need to call it anything right. So we can just find the value. So this is going to equal 196 minus 98 is 98 divided by 2. That's going to be 49. So now we have the value of this expression, which will be helpful. Of course, we're going to use it in our calculations. Okay. Now that gave me, an, that gave me another equation, but only um, a numerical value in this case. Okay. Now how do I use this expression? Let's go ahead and look at it on the next page. Of course, this reminds me that I have to take this expression here and square it, right? Because that's the only way we're going to get to it. And as you know, this is equal to 
u, right? So if I square it, I should be getting u squared. Let's go ahead and see what happens from here. Of course, I should be getting x squared y squared plus x squared z squared plus y squared z squared. And then I'll be getting additional terms such as 2 times xy times xc, which is x squared yz plus 2 times y squared xc plus 2 times z squared xy. Now, the first three terms, we already know this part here. We know that this is equal to 49, but we also have to deal with this. But this can be factored, and this is u, so let's write it as u squared is equal to 49 plus. Now, this expression can be factored because we do have 2xyz as a common factor, and inside the parentheses, we're getting x plus y plus z, and from here, this is p and this is s. So we get another equation which looks like u squared equals 49 plus 2ps. All right. Great. Now we have this equation, u squared equals 49 plus 2ps. We have 36 minus 3p is equal to s times the quantity 14 plus 14 minus u. And we have something for you. So let's go ahead and put those together. And then we'll be solving the resulting equation from there. All right. So what do we get from here? So this is the summary pretty much of what we have. Let me go ahead and actually, why don't I just put the other equations here as well? I just got u equals u equals s squared minus 14 over 2. That's another equation that I have. And I also have the 36 minus 3p is equal to s times 14 minus u. So now this is a system in three variables. And we can solve it. Okay. And the idea here is we can replace u with something that's going to give us a relationship between p and s. The third equation, we can do the same thing. We're going to get another relationship with p and s, and then we'll put it together. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it now. So what am I getting from here? Well, since I have the u squared equals 49 plus 2 ps, let's go ahead and write it this way. So let me copy that equation one more time. u squared is equal to 49 plus 2ps. Now u was equal to s squared minus 14 over 2. I'm going to square that. And then 49 plus uh, 2s multiplied by p. But p can be written as something, right? So this is what I need. Let me use the other equation that I had, which was 36 minus 3p. And that was equal to, if you remember, that was s times 14 minus u. But u can be replaced with this expression right here is s squared minus 14 over 2. So let's go ahead and do that. 36 minus 3p is equal to s times the quantity 14 minus s squared minus 14 over 2. Now you can make a common denominator. You're going to get a 40, 28 plus 14, which is 42. And then 42 minus s squared, multiply both sides by 2. And you're going to be getting something nicer like this. 76 minus 6p is equal to 42s minus s cubed because I have to distribute the s and I get s cubed from there. And from here, I can basically isolate p in terms of s. And that should look like s cubed minus 42s plus 72. I'm kind of skipping some of the details. I hope you don't mind because I don't want to keep this video or I don't want to make this video too long. Okay. That's why I'm kind of skipping. But you can do these for yourself. It's not too hard to do. So that gave me a really nice relationship. Uh, gave me P in terms of S, which is something I can use here. So we can just go ahead and multiply. Let me just write P for now because I don't really have room for that. But let's just go ahead and replace P with something that we can work out. So we'll square this, which was you remember. And then 49 plus 2s multiplied by p, which can be written as s cubed minus 42s plus 72 over 6. Now, the next step involves, obviously, 2 goes into 6 three times. And we kind of simplify this a little bit. We're going to distribute the s, and we're going to square the left-hand side. So it's going to look like the following, s to the fourth power minus 28s squared plus 196 divided by 4 is equal to 49 plus, and if I distribute the s, it's going to look like s to the fourth minus 42s squared plus 72s all over 3. And then, of course, we need to make a common denominator and then add it to the numerator and then just cross multiply, so on and so forth. And let's see what we're going to get from here. So after I multiply both sides by whatever numbers I need, this is what I should be getting. Okay, let me go ahead and 
write the results here, it's going to look like the following. So I should be getting something like 4 times s to the fourth minus 168 s squared plus 288 s plus 588. Now at this point you might be wondering that's where that comes from, but if you make a common denominator, this is going to be 3 times 49, which is 147. So 147 will be added here. But then you're going to multiply that by 4. That's where we get the 588 from. Make sense? So we're kind of cross multiplying here after we make a common denominator. Of course, one side will be multiplied by 3. And this guy over here is going to be multiplied by, I'm sorry, the right hand side is multiplied by 4. The left hand side is multiplied by 3. And this is what we are getting. Okay? I hope you don't mind me skipping some of these steps again because I seriously don't want to keep this video too long. Okay, so from the other side where the 3 is, I'm getting 3s to the 4th power minus 84s squared plus 588. The beautiful part of this equation is, I mean, it's really cool that the constants cancel out. Isn't that beautiful? So they cancel out, giving us a nicer equation. And of course, you're going to subtract everything on the right-hand side from the left-hand side. And that gives us a nicer equation too. 4s to the 4th minus 3s to the 4th is going to give you 1s to the 4th. Now you have negative 84s squared, which you have to add to both sides. Negative 6, 168 plus 84. So we were basically adding plus 84s squared here, which comes from here. That's going to give you, because 84 is half of 168, the answer should be negative 84s squared, right? Okay, great. And then, of course, I'm getting the 288s as my S term, and there are no constants because they canceled out. Great. So this is a quartic equation, but it's kind of like uh, a reduced quartic, and we can um, factor this. We can take the S out because there's no constant, right? So obviously, S equals 0 is a solution, but there's more than that. So this gives me... This gives me a cubic equation inside the parentheses, which needs to be solved, of course, but at least we got that s equals 0 is a solution. And remember, s is equal to x plus y plus z, which is the sum. Okay, but I need to do more than that. So now, here, if you're looking for rational solutions, you're going to be looking at divisors of 288. And upon inspection, don't they always say that in the books, like, upon inspection, we realize that s equals 6 is a solution. How did you get that, right? You have to try all these options. Anyway, so s equals 6 works, and then this equation factors as, and you can definitely check this, you know, if you don't trust me on that, you're going to be getting s times s minus 6 multiplied by s squared plus 6x minus 48, and the whole thing is equal to zero. Nice. Now we got a quadratic, and this quadratic is easily solved because you can really complete the square. So you can kind of write it like s squared plus 6x, uh, 6s is equal to 48. Add 9 to both sides, you get s plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 57. And from here you get s plus 3 is equal to plus minus the square root of 57. And then you can just add negative 3 and get the radical solutions. Great. So we got some radical values for s. We got some... Uh, integer values for s like 0 and 6. So we're going to be looking at all these cases individually. And trust me, like I said earlier, some of these are very, very messy. So I'm just going to have to give you the s value and leave it at that. But I'm going to be working out some of the complex solutions here. So don't be unhappy. Okay, cool. So we can start with s equals 0. Uh, what happens? And that looks simple, right? Doesn't it look like, okay, if s is equal to zero, then the result should be real simple, right? But that's not the case, unfortunately. Because what happens is, if s is equal to zero, now let's see what happens. If s equal to zero, then we get the following. It's interesting that we ran out of blackboard because this is a really long problem. Anyways, if s is equal to zero, then you get u, u, get u equals negative seven and p equals 12. Obviously, we're talking about the you know, x, y, x, z, and y, z here from Vieta's formulas, and we're talking about x, y, z here. So if you put those into an equation, you basically get a cubic equation like this. And trust me, the solutions to this cubic are not simple at all. So I'm going to leave it at that. You can wolf from alpha it and see what, what it is for yourself, but I'm just going to skip that uh, option for now, okay? They're very, very messy. If s is equal to 6, we get a nice solution because from here we get u equals 11 and p equals 6. That's kind of neat because this gives us a nice solution. And of course, I have to consider the permutations as well. So I'm going to write it as a set to cover all cases. 1, 
two and three. Isn't that nice? Like this is actually how I came up with the problem. I thought about one, two, three, and then plug it in and I got these equations. But of course it brings more solutions than that. And we have one more case, which is S equals, I mean, there are two more, but let me just give you one of them. And the other one is very similar. If S is equal to negative three minus radical seven, then from here, you're gonna be getting the X, Y, Z values. They're kind of interesting. Let me go, go ahead and write it as a set as well. So the X, Y, Z values are gonna look like this. Obviously, one of them is gonna be nice, like negative three minus root 57 over two, but the other is gonna be complex conjugates. I know you, you guys love complex numbers and you wanna see the complex solutions. So here's some solutions to you. Uh, one of the solutions is gonna be like negative three minus the square root of 57 minus the square root of 86 plus 18 times the square root of 57 all multiplied by i and the whole thing is divided by four. And of course, the, the next one is going to be coming with a minus sign and it's, I'm just gonna write it as plus minus. I hope you don't mind because I don't really have any room for that. Okay, so pretty much this is, these are all the solutions. And, and this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I gotta kind of circle the whole thing. Well, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Until tomorrow, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.